Well, many times it does make a difference. Let's, let's be clear. It doesn't always, but many times it does. For example, uh, I represent a, a young kid right now, 10 years old, whose mama got burned up in a fire. Uh, uh, in an office complex because they didn't have the proper safety equipment there. They didn't have the sprinklers. They didn't have the fire alarms working. There were, there were some massive problems. You take a situation like that, and that child's going to need money. That child's lost his mother, who was his sole support. Uh, it was a single-parent home. Uh, the child's father was not in the home. And so that child's now in a position of... of of uh, being raised probably by grandparents who don't have the money and don't have the resources. You take away a breadwinner and you need to s fix that. But, uh, but there's another side to the coin. The other side to the coin is you've got to hold these companies accountable because these companies, they have these money people who sit up in the boardrooms with their calculators and they say, okay, let's see, we can fix this dresser, but if we fix the dresser, it's going to cost us $5 million. Or instead of recalling these dressers and fixing them or alerting people, we could go ahead and just let them crush a few toddlers. Well, if we know the toddlers are only going to bring $250,000 because the jurors are going to be beguiled and, and hypnotized by the lawyer's verbal voodoo where they, you know, mesmerize the jurors into thinking money won't bring anybody back. Well, if we can keep it under, say, $500,000, why should we ever fix our product? We make more money letting people die. Those are the kinds of decisions that can be made in these boardrooms, and we got to stop that. This is America. These people ought to be accountable. They ought to be accountable for what they do. They shouldn't be able to get out of it by saying, well, gee, I'm sorry you lost your spouse, or I'm sorry you lost your kid. Money can't bring them back, so let us keep the money. That's not right. Money can't, serving criminal time can't bring back a murder victim. Or, or, or restore a robbery, but that doesn't stop us from putting the criminal behind bars or dealing with them. You, that's no way around responsibility. That's not what this country's about. Well, you, I mean, it, very well said. And ladies and gentlemen out there, uh, we're going to take a break here in a minute, but I want you all to think about that, that when we do have this uh, equal time, as I like to say, we, we're trying to get our equal time in, not, not for us, not for the trial lawyers, but for the people out there that are trying to fight the little guy against corporate America in the last 20, 30 years, it has become really heavy duty trying to fight against these people. They've got politicians that they're backing. They've got laws that have been passed. Then they do a smear job on all lawyers. If you separate a lawyer from his client, what do you have? Courthouse doors are being shut every day, ladies and gentlemen. And and when we come back, I hope you can stay with us. We're going to do another Absolutely. half hour. Uh, I just want to take a break real quick for our sponsors here. Some very good men, uh, Rhodes, Vela, and all their staff. And I also want to thank the home healths out there that are also backing us because you know we're there for elder rights. And I also want to thank uh, the uh, Juan Reyna, a good friend of mine, who comes out on the show too. He's a strong supporter. And we welcome people to watch this show and on YouTube, spread the link, spread the word, because we're trying to get that word out there. And I'm going to keep coming on with quality trial lawyers, just like Mark Lanier, Randy Sorrells, uh, David Matthews, uh, you know, D T Gerald Treese, you know, celebrating his 100th uh, victory there, national title. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about why Mark does what he does. And also, there is also, and I know to some people it's an oxymoron, but we're going to talk about the Christian Trial Lawyers Association. And yes, you can try cases and do work that you need to do for people and also have a personal relationship with Christ. And we're going to be talking about that. And we're also going to be talking about the many other cases that Mark is working on and educate you all on the anatomy of what it takes to do a product liability lawsuit when we come back.
And we're back. Uh, this is the second part of South Texas Crossfire. You're watching uh, Joe Flores, your host, uh, attorney at law, and uh, we are playing the show in Laredo, San Antonio, and Corpus on Time Warner. And let's not forget, it's on YouTube. You just uploaded www.youtube.com. You can see 100 uploads and growing, and you just put in that search term. Is crossfire. If you're just joining us, uh, I am interviewing, I have the distinct pleasure of talking with Mark Lanier, one of the top trial lawyers in the nation, and he has the verdicts to prove it. Uh, we've been talking about standing up to big business, how to advocate for the poor, the elderly, the disenfranchised, and how uh, big business and also, foreign companies have gotten away with a lot and not being held accountable. And we're talking about possible solutions to that and educating you all out there. Don't just say it's lawsuit abuse. Actually, it's an abuse on people that they are not getting their day in court. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you, Joe. What an honor to be on your show. Well, you know, we were talking, Mark, thank you. Uh, we were talking, uh, you know, about some interesting cases. We talked about that Chinese case where we had that red ball and Whataburger was held holding the bag on that because we couldn't get to the Chinese company. Your firm couldn't get to them. And I'm, I'm sure the, the, the information is going to appear on your screen, but what is your firm website? It's www.lanierlawfirm. That's spelled L-A-N-I-E-R, and then law, and then firm. Dot com. It's pretty simple, and uh, we invite you to come uh, log on and see what's going on with us. Well, and it's important now in this day and age, and, and the numbers and information are going to appear on your screen if you have questions for Mark and his staff. Uh, but we were talking about products, and we were talking about why you do what you do. But also, in this second half, you are also the founding member of Christian Trial Lawyers Association, and uh, some people out there think that that's a, uh, an oxymoron, if it will, that a person can have uh, 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 very good convictions and faith and also go out there. But I beg to differ, and, and I'm sure you do too. How did you for, uh, found the Christian Trial Lawyers Association? How did that come about? Joe, we had in Texas, uh, our legislature was looking at making some pretty harsh changes in the area of law. Uh, harsh changes that were going to shut the courthouse doors, and in fact, history has shown that this is true when it comes to medical malpractice cases in a number of different areas. And I thought, surely our politicians just don't realize what they're doing. So I went down to Austin and and found a number of Christian politicians, or, or politicians, I should say, who who, who claim uh, a Christian faith and. And I went to them and said, hi, I'm a Christian and a trial lawyer, and, and I want to explain to you uh, uh, how if you pass this law, it's going to be very damaging. And a uh, number of these lawmakers looked me in the eye and said, A, we don't believe you can be a Christian and a lawyer, and B, we don't really care what the effect is. This is what we have to pass, and so we're going to pass it anyway. And I was furious. Uh, I felt like uh, I had been naive about our political system, perhaps, um, but I was also very offended at the idea that people had a perception you couldn't be a Christian and a trial lawyer. I thought, actually, if you're going to be a lawyer and you're going to be in the courtroom, the, the natural thing for a Christian to do, you know, it's, it's the Bible in the book of James that says that pure and undefiled religion is, is taking care of widows and orphans and and uh, you can't read through the Old Testament prophets without understanding from Amos and a number of others that, that one of God's harshest judgments on the nation of Israel came because the rich people were oppressing the poor people through courts and other means and uh, refusing justice uh, to those who didn't have enough money to buy their own justice or merit their own justice. And, and so uh, uh, I've always thought that a Christian uh, in the legal circles has an obligation to look out for the poor and the unfortunate and, and the folks that, that are the underdogs that, that can't find justice any other way. So uh, I decided then and there that, that uh, we would form an association and, and get the word out there that there are Christian trial lawyers. And it was amazing what happened. As, as we formed it, we found out not only are there Christian trial lawyers all over this country, um, but there are lawyers who needed a support system, who needed a central way to, to communicate to each other, encourage each other, 
uh, help each other through some issues, personal and professional. And it's turned into a, a wonderful organization on a number of different fronts. And uh, that's uh, what we're about.